Hello, this is Roland. Welcome. Today I want to read something to you from The Imitation of Christ, a book by Thomas a. Kempis. It's the most widely read Christian devotional of all time. Isn't that something? It's amazing. It's called The Imitation of Christ. It was written a long time ago. Okay, Nobody's quite sure who wrote it, but they think it may have been a man by the name of Thomas from Kempis, Thomas a. Kempis. I want to read something to you from it. It's very beautiful, this book. Very, very good. I want to read this to you. This is from chapter, book one, chapter 26. Lord, this is the work of a perfect man or a perfect person never to slacken his mind from attention to heavenly things, and among many cares, to pass along as if it were without care, not after the manner of one indifferent, but rather with the privilege of a free mind, cleaving to no creature with inordinate affection. That is so brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yes, this is chapter 26 in Latin. Would you like to hear a little bit of it in Latin? It was originally written in Latin. Domine, hoc opus des perfecti viri. This is the work of a perfect man. Numquam ab intentiatione caelestium animum relaxare. Never to take his mind away from heavenly things. Et inter multas curas, and among many cares, quasi sine cura transire, to pass as if without care. This is, this is absolutely brilliant. Let's talk about it. You see, you've heard, you've heard Christ said to be in the world, but not of the world. He said those who belong to him are in the world, but not of the world. You've, you've heard me say that you have to go through life without life going, go through experience without experience going through you. It's called detach, a little bit of detachment. The Buddhists talk, and quite rightly, talk about detachment. But there's one thing missing, and that is it's detachment, but with attachment. See, it's detachment from the world, but attachment to, to God. Attachment to God within to the truth, to, to walk in the inner light, to always be attentive to heavenly things. He says here to, um, he said, Domine hoc opus est perfecti viri, of the perfect man. Christ said, be ye perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. Okay. So, um, he said to never take your your mind or to relax your mind from heavenly things. To always be attentive. Now how do you do that? Well that's what I'm trying what I've been trying to share with people for many years now. With the help of a of a proper meditation. See, what you need to learn is to have a little bit of detachment. To stand back a little bit. You're used to to focusing, concentrating, fixating Okay, on things, studying, trying, okay? All of those things are hypnotic by nature. And then you become captured. Your attention is captured by things, okay? And then you respond with emotion. And then before you know it, you're wallowing in emotion, okay? So, and through the emotion, there's a connection to the world, and the world comes in. See? That's why when you lay down at night after a day, you, your mind is swirling with all the things that happened. The more exciting the day was, the more your mind is swirling with everything that happened. But you must learn to go through the, to be in the world, but not of the world. Okay? With a little bit of detachment. And the proper meditation helps you to find that. First thing in the morning, you sit quietly. And 
stand back a little bit from thought so you can observe thought. See, when the world gets in, when the world gets in, then, then you be, you become. See what see what it is is that when you when you are penetrated by the world. See, like I, I was saying on my radio program a couple of weeks ago, a very nice, a very good program. You should look for it. I think it was March tenth. Um, I think excellent little commentary there. There are two ways of looking at anything. Okay, you can look at it intensely, or you can look at it lightly. Like there's two ways of reading a book. You can study word all the word study, or you can scan it lightly. Okay? There are two ways of looking at anything. Okay? It's when so but you have to learn to look at things lightly. To scan. Instead of reading intensely, scan. That's what I do. I scan books. I scan things. There are two ways of listening. You can listen intently. Or you can listen lightly. Let it go in one ear and out the other. If there's anything of value, you'll hear it. Otherwise, just let it go in and out the ear. Let foolish arguments go in and out the ear of your ear without registering. Let the TV at the other end of the room be blaring without paying much attention to it. It's, not, it's nothing. It's useless stuff. It's a distraction. It's a distraction. See, there's a, there's a razor's edge between... Um, paying attention to something because it's of some value and using that, see, as a distraction or to build your ego in some way. See, if there's some gossip going on, it just, it doesn't concern you. It just goes in one ear and out the other. You don't even pay it any mind after it's, afterwards you don't even remember what was said. But if you want, if you're listening because you want to hear something about someone, or you want to hear something so you can tell somebody else and seem important, see, or you can't resist getting some naughty knowledge. You see what I mean? That's the difference. So you have to practice. You have you you need the help of the meditation because now you're used to getting lost in everything, and emotions, any emotions. If you get a little bit excited, a little bit angry, a little bit hurt feelings, a little bit. Um, a little bit bummed out over something, or a little bit puffed up by something. Any emotion at all is, you know, of the what we think of as emo of emotions and passions and angers and excitements and yelling and screaming at the ball green. Any emotion at all is a sign that you are, you are, um, you're too close to th to the world, to things. They're penetrating you. They're getting in into you, and you're responding to them. Okay. But if you stand back okay, and go through life with a light touch, like a ballerina floating across the stage, okay, um, that's what he's talking about here. So he says, Lord, this is the work of a perfect man, never to slacken his mind from attention to heavenly things. Okay, so how do you become attentive to heavenly things? Most people think that you have to constantly be concentrating on it and trying. No. If, when you are standing back, see, there's two places you can, your soul can be. It can be lost in thought or lost in things through, through your mind, or it can be sitting lightly and observing. The, soul, the proper role of, of the soul is to be an observer, to go through life like a tourist. See, like when you're on vacation, you just see all kinds of interesting things. Okay? And so, so but remember, there are two places. You can either be lost in thinking, lost in emotion, lost in the scene, lost in study, lost in music, lost in anything. Or you can be standing back. Okay? And when you are standing back, that means you are closer to the Spirit. Paul told the Galatians to walk in the Spirit. Okay? So that's what, that's what you are when you are standing back. See? Remember, there are two places you can be lost down in emotions and imagination and thinking. See? And, and through them, in, lost in the world as it impinges upon you, or you can be the observer. 
the observer of, of thought. See, it doesn't mean that you blank thought. It doesn't mean that you repress or suppress thought. You know, let the thoughts flow by, whatever they are, but just don't fall into them. It's like the difference between sitting on the bank of a river and watching the river flow by or jumping into the river and floating downstream. See the difference? So when you are standing back, then you are closer to heavenly things. You're closer to the light. And in the light you can discern all things. So you look at things neutrally. Okay? You're neither for things nor against them. See? You don't like them on the one hand, you don't hate them on the other hand. You just look at them lightly, in a disinterested way. Okay? And here it says, um, it says not indifferent. See, indifferent means not caring, blasé. See, which is an attitude, right? No, not with, you have an attitude of no attitude. You have no attitude. You just notice. So it's kind of like being indifferent, but it's not. Okay? It's just slightly detached. Okay? And then if there's something to be noted, you know, so how do, so how do I, how am I attentive to heavenly things? By remembering to be a little bit this and not getting caught up in things. Then if I get caught up a little bit, I notice it and then I snap out of it. If I'm driving along and all of a sudden I'm lost in thinking about something, I notice it and I snap out of it and I'm back to the present again. Okay? There's music, and then all of a sudden I catch myself tapping my toe to the music. I'm getting lost in it, so I, I stand back, I snap out of it. Okay? So the music is there, but I'm not lost in it. So it's kind of like just snapping out. Something reminds me to snap out. I don't have to try. It's effortless. It reminds me. And then if there sometimes, once in a while, there's like a, there's, I don't know how to describe it, but something is not quite right. Okay? Somebody says something, it's not quite right. I don't even know why it's not quite right, but it's just not quite right. And then I, I just observe and don't respond. Okay? Or somebody's doing something, somebody re requests that I do something, and, it's not and I sense it's not quite right. In the light, standing back and detached. I notice that something not, and so I just don't do it. See? I just don't do it. It's that simple. Or a situation comes up, maybe with a child or a partner, so a situation, and something needs to be said. I don't know what to say. I honestly don't. So I stand back and I observe. I just stand there. But then all of a sudden I do know what to say. There's so many benefits to that little bit of detachment, which you could also say, See, when you're not lost in the world, then you're automatically attentive to heavenly things. When you're not lost in thought, lost in the imagination, lost in worry, lost in reliving the past or worrying about the future. When you're not lost in some exciting thing for your ego to puff you up and make you look good or something, something that you want. When you're not lost in those, you're automatically closer to heavenly things, you see? So it's very beautiful, this... this um, the Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis.